I was always in the project, but still, you know. So, so the music in your family, did anybody in your family play? Well, yes, my, uh, I have an uncle who played, named Freddie Kemp, played with Fast Domino, his jazz, and his original band uh, played saxophone. Uh, he was one of the uh, one of the well-known members of my family that played a music, musical instrument. Do you remember him? Did yeah, play? yeah, definitely. Yeah, definitely. I, I, I looked up to him just for that, because you know, he, he accomplished something. What about records that your family might play? Records? Okay. Of course. Well, growing, growing up in my house, I grew up, I grew up like in the, in the early 80s. So I have I have two older brothers, and during that time, hip hop was just forming, just starting. Sugar Hill Gang. My first album was a Sugar Hill Gang album. The song was called Apache, which my brother was a DJ. Also, he was a DJ, and we had crates and crates of albums growing up. Two turntables and a mixer in my house. So I grew up. And who's your brother? Walter Tucker, Stick Pen, AKA. <laughs> so, what's the first memory that you have of um, hip hop in the city, hearing hip hop, hearing bounce, um, thinking that you were really interested in it as a musical form, or did you even start there? Well, me and my brothers, we used to perform at talent shows, and we used to do cameo, like sets of cameo in, in the Jackson Five. Then, once I heard Doug It Fresh and the Get Fresh crew do La Di Da on the radio. That was it for me, like right then and now. I you know, I always had the Sugar Hill game, you know, but there was something about Doug It Fresh and, and Slick Rick and that, that caught my eye with that La Di Da that caught our ear. And I was in elementary. And that was a hit. <laughs> it was a huge hit back then. It was. So then after that, um what maybe were some of the first New Orleans records, New Orleans bounced uh, uh, block well, parties, anything? The first New Orleans, the first New Orleans group that I remember was Manny Fresh and Gregory D. Yeah, yeah Fresh and Gray. But it was big time back then. We were young. They were the first record deal from the city, like for us rap. Did you remember when you see him? That's my homeboy, though. Oh, hang out, you know, we all grew up in the same areas. We all ran in the same circles. So it was nothing like, you know. But it was good to know him because that's my, that's my friend. He's a friend of mine. <laughs> sure, but yeah. like what clubs would you go to? Uh, see, see, I was young. See, I was young, but I also used to go to the club, like, with my older brothers. I always hang with the older guys. I, I was more the, the little guy with the older dudes. So we used to go to, man, that's my I don't want to say how old I am, but still, we used to go to a lot of the clubs was popping back then. The Famous was popping a long time ago. The Famous. Uh, uh, Where was that? Where was the goddamn Famous? was in the seven, what that, seven war? Yeah. Right there, off, well, what that is? What's that? Legion Field? Right up, right behind that. Yeah, right there. Yeah. The Famous. The Famous later became what? Uh, I can't think of it. Do you know? <clears throat> they just stood over a few years, like they just enjoyed a few jams. They like, I remember. They down. changed the name. I yeah, what it was. It wasn't sensation. Sensation. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. Sensation. But see, we used to have clubs up to like Big Man, Forty Nine Newtons, that my neighborhood we used to go 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 to. You know, like holding the walls, but they used to be jumping holding. This is actually where bounce music started. Like Uptown, Uptown, T. T. Tucker, D. J. Er, really kick bounce. Like that was that's it. Like they started it, and everything came after that. Like as far as bounce music, but with rap, with rap, Gregory D. and Fresh. Once they once they got on, cause we all, I ran with the three nine. I don't know if you ever heard of three nine possible. But three nine possible was our. And we used to go, you know, KLC, that's, you know, that's my main man right there. Soldier Slim, while well, he was 
ice cream back then. And we all, that's, that's my little circle right there. Me, Soldier Slim, KLC. So you know all these people and they're close to you and they're all, you know, you're seeing everybody doing these kind of like, you know, big things on a national scale and you're performing with your brothers and then, you know, you're aspiring to be a rapper yourself and then your artists are starting to perform. At what point, what was the first point in public that you felt like, I could really make this a career? Your first show, the first time that you really got on front of people, the first time you really right. made an impact. Right, my first show. My first shows. My first show. I'm trying to think of my first show. It's so long ago. I my first show. That's a shame. You can stop it if you No, excuse me. Nah, my first show. My first, first oh, you here we go. My first show that I remember was on the second floor in the Magnolia Project in the Belmont court, me and Soldier Slim, at a DJ block party. And it was nice. I know we all got a nice response. It was nice. Was it was that. also Soldier Slim's first time performing live, too. Yeah. So what was the crowd there? Like, was it, was, it was a lot of, you know, a DJ. It consists of the whole city, really. Everybody from different parts of the city just coming in and just hanging out at a DJ at a block party, whatever they call it. You know. It's called a DJ. That was wild. That was like the start of it all right there. That was like the start of it all. And then from there, um, you know, you've had, you're one of the most well-respected performers in the city. Um, You know, you've had a very, very long and respected career. Um, At what point after that, after this big, you know, like, first kind of show that you remember, what's the next step that really made you feel like you moved to the next level of your career? When uh, when I signed with Lil John, when Lil John, Lil John came to town, and uh, it was a rap convention, the B R E something like that came, and a friend of mine he attended, he went, and uh, he ran to John. John was just a producer. Well, he was he was a producer, and uh, with my friend he got a he got the gift for gab, so he just got on, the, you know, anybody, he just was networking. We call it networking. And uh, he telling them about me, man, I got the hottest, da 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 I'm telling you, I'm telling you. So, you know, it was like, okay, Vince Phillips was like, let me let me look for him, let me, let me, let me hear him. So they were looking for me for like three days, they say, like, I'm looking for you the day. Now, I usually don't rap for certain, like, just the rap, like, it's it, it got to be a close circle of friends of mine, and, I, and then a crowd of form. So John, well, Vince asked me to rap, so I rapped for him. And like two days later, I was in Atlanta, and I've been I was in Atlanta for like five years, working with John, meeting people, and, uh, and met everybody in Atlanta, and recorded two albums, and we never released it, but I got a chance to work with everybody, man. And that was that was it right there. Another part of that was it. <laughs> uh, should I say? Yeah. And then at what point did you come back to New Orleans? Uh, I got an offer of the record deal. Ah, oh, damn. It's true. I got I got offered of with the medicine men. Well, Beats by the Pound left K, uh, left Master P. And KL called me up. I knew Craig B. Also Moby. You know Dale from years ago and they called me up was like uh we're gonna do our own thing and we want you to I want you to come, you know. So we uh we had a had a deal in place with Tommy Boy. And I signed a deal with Tommy Boy. I came home and been home ever since working with everybody at home. And then that was that was your big uh record that came out in two thousand one that we're talking about. Yeah, yeah. And um the medicine man have a really, really Aesthetic. I think, at least to me, they sound more uniquely or New Orleans than a lot of people. Uh, mm-hmm. I think that they have, like, they've captured that kind of creepy, dark, but also funny mm-hmm. party music, but it's, you know, introspective. Mm-hmm. I mean, everything that New Orleans is, I think they really right. capture on right. the record. Right, right, right. Um, and then, like, you on top of it and everything was just right. insane. Right, right, right. So, right. you know, and that record is still on everybody's mm-hmm. top, you know. 
Right, right, right. right. It's a classic. It's a classic. Right. Yeah. So I just want to back up and talk a little bit about um, your work with them, how the songwriting process works. Did you, did they come to you with things? Was it a collaborative process? Did you write over the beats? Did you start with rap and then influence the beats? How did everything work for those songs? Well, most of the time they already have, you know, as producers, they have millions of beats. So I like to, I like to go, if I do, like, I like to go and listen to, and listen to the beats. Like, this might have something already that, oh, you know, just that day, hey, if I'm like, find something. Cause I'm going to go through all your beats before I, I pick one. I, I, I might pick, out of 20, I might pick eight. Out of eight, I might pick, uh, narrow it down to that one, you know. Or sometimes I might just go through this file and just hear something and, I don't know. I just write, write something to it, or I might have something for it already, if it can fit or whatever. How it goes. Sometimes he, they might create a beat and I feel it and get on it. Uh, sometimes it might be like, hey, I think like what it should. What that song, it should dog, uh, was like a. Kel was like, man, I got a hit, and I was like, all right, let me hear it. And when KL said he got a hit, like I really, I really, really believe him. Like he have a hit, because he have hits. But he's like, man, I got, I got this hit, bro. I'm telling you, the song big, bro. I'm telling you. So I'm like, man, I got, I'm excited. So I go, <laughs> I drive to Baton Rouge. And he like, man, you ready? You know, we rode around. KL got a, he got a way of doing things. Like when you get up there, he's not gonna just gonna put the beat on immediately. We got probably to water, run a Walmart. Go to uh, Lowe's, you know, something like that. You know, walk around. About three hours later, then we'll come back. The anticipation. He put, he put the beat on. I was like, oh yeah. I'm like, I see. Yeah, we got a hit. It's like I'm telling you, it's a hit, bro. I'm telling you. And I fell in love. I really, I really fell in love. But when I once I did, now once I did this shit, dog, I didn't like it. Once I did it, but everybody liked it. I was like, yeah, I like it. I mean, I don't like it, but. Well, where the subject, where <laughs> the subject matter come from? I don't know. Just writing, just uh, in, in the house. You know, we, I, I don't. I just go off. I just go off the spur of the moment. Like, you know, I, I just. I get visions in my head and just write with those. To those. To that movie I have in, that, in my head. I put a movie in. I, if it's a movie and I, and I write to the movie I have scripted in my head of that song or how I feel the beat might be. I don't know. Make me feel one way and I. I, I put a movie to it. If I can put a vision to it, it's a hit. If I can put a, uh, uh, if I can put a, a video to it with myself starring myself, it's a hit. <laughs> I, can, and, I can see that because that, that whole record is so visual. It reminds me of a comic book. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Well, actually, it was going with that route. DC comic, the guy from DC comic drew that. Uh, I forgot his name. Just so long ago, but he, it was a concept. We were gonna come out with a comic book. With the album, which was, it was a hot, it would be a hot marketing tool. Just nobody knows. Still haven't done it yet. Either. I do it for like a commemoration. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Not that nobody don't steal my shit. I do. But yeah, it was it was hot at the time, man. It was hot. You know, we did a, a lot of things. I went and I met met a lot of people. So after that, uh, after that deal fell through, uh, I wound up signing with Cash Money. Uh, also friends of mine, we all grew up, same circle, like type of people, you know. But, and, uh, you know, we, I helped I help Brian with, uh, uh, with the Fast Money album. It's on the Fast Money. I was on Manny Fresh first album, uh, uh, the Miles of Manny Fresh. Uh, Lil Wayne's Carter Two. And the leaker called a three. I was on that too. Uh, Mirror Ben Ari hip hop violinist album. I did a whole lot. You know, I, I did a, I did a, I did a few things with a few people, man. And I'm just happy that, that I got the opportunity to do all that, man. You've done a ton of tracks with Baby. I've done a ton of tracks, tons of tracks. Tell us about the G's come out song. The G's come out. Wow, I'm right. <laughs> I haven't heard that song in a minute, but hey, the G's come out. Who did the track? I think Diesel did the track. I'm not sure. But uh, it was one day in the studio, we just like, you know, it was just a song I picked, like a beat I picked. I was like, oh, I'm going to do that right there. I did it. It was like, man, it should be a single. 
I was like, really? I was like, mm. But, you know, so me and Baby, we, 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 I did it. We went to, me and Baby rode to Q9 at, like, the radio station. We <laughs> rode to Q93. I was like, check that out. I was like, oh, yeah. You know, they're going to be like, hey, it's a hit to us. But they might be like, ah, oh, nah, I don't know. But I didn't get the love, like, you know, like. They didn't play it. Like, I didn't want them to, I just wanted an opinion on it. This body language showed me like, mm -mm. but it was Brian's idea. I don't want to put that out there like that for real people. Like that was <laughs> wasn't my idea. Yeah. But the G's come out was a nice song. What about your stage name? Uh, Six Shot. Huh, Brian? Uh, well, like I said, man, I grew up in a Magnolia project, and uh, you know, you know. It's rough, man. It's rough. Growing up, you know how it is in New Orleans. You know, growing up, you know, and you make you make decisions and you pay for it and you keep it moving, you know. Yeah, yeah. So Six Shot, you know, was a name I got. Uh, really, this was not. This was this was a while ago. Like, like I used to, uh, I used to like to play with guns a lot. You know, I used to, I used to, I used to do that. Like, uh, as a man, you know, and uh, it was kind of foolish, but still, you know, that's why I, I, I'm, 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 I'm changing my name slowly but surely, you know, I'm taking that, uh, another approach with it, but uh, six shots, it's like, it's like guns, I got shot six times, and all that stuck, so all that was there, you know, it was, it was some gangster shit, and so. What name would you like to have? Shotty right now, that's what I'm pushing for right now. That's me right there. Everybody, you know, everybody call me six or, or shot up. No, nobody ever really called me six shot unless it's somebody like, you know, it, you know, dealing with some, you know, other than, you know, other than that. Street people are like shot it, you know. Six, what's up, shot? Or, you know, you know. I'm good with that. You know. I'm just trying to get away from the six shot. Oh, oh no! I'm about, it's kind of like old school DJing, you know what I mean? That's all it is, old school DJing and and like uh, uh, MCing, uh, master of ceremony, you know what I mean? Because you really chanting, right? you know what I mean? It's just like you know, it's just a it's just a just a party chant, like you know. But it's it's creative, right? From what bounce came from. To what it is now, bounce like it ain't. You know, bounce not going nowhere. Like, like no time soon. A friend of mine called me from New York. It was like they have bounce night up in. <laughs> I'm like up in. What at BB King or something like that? Somewhere, somewhere, they have bounce night in New York. It's like that's crazy, boy. We'll tell you a story out there when we get done. About bounce night in New York. Boy, I know DJ Earl was still living. Boy, I know Earl. I know he'll be happy. happy. But yeah, man, rap music, uh, New Orleans, it's not going nowhere. It's something. That, it's something we deal with. Just like DC got go go. We have uh, we have bounce. It's like Cali, uh, the Bay have hyphy. And, you know, every, every demographic got his own type of music. Now, you know. Atlanta got something. I forgot what it was. Houston got screwed, but you know, our our music is like uh, the DJ is still involved. I want to say that about bounce music, cause I always be like, man, in rap music, the DJ is the DJ is really no more. Like he's the scratch is no more. Like it's that's a lost relic of hip hop right there, which is I love the DJ. No, I don't know, you know, but bounce music has a DJ. Go up and down. Go ahead, do it. Okay. So if you just want to sort of tell us like about the DJ, the DJ. Hold it right there. Is it going to be okay? Do you need to adjust the mic? Go ahead, talk. 
Yo, can you hear that right there? You really can't hear that now. Sure, you can hear him, but you know he's low enough that I can't. Can you do the editing and you go into sound and mute that out? You can do that now. <laughs> yeah, that thing was loud. Though. It's okay. Right, so, okay. Um, so your point about the DJ. Gotta get your engineer game on. <laughs> <laughs> that would be hard to mute out there. Like in uh, in jazz, they still dance to jazz here. Mm -hmm. they don't dance to jazz anymore. They don't do that. I know. Anymore. I know. The DJ is still important here. The DJ is the DJ is important here because the DJ really is the heartbeat of the party. True indeed. Wow. Right. Because it asks them, they just keep doing it, isn't Sure, but it's going to look crazy if we move right. in and then half of it's in and half of it's out. I say we just roll it. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Um, right. Yeah. The DJ is a, a real important. Real important, bro, and because uh, I thought the DJ was like just in the club getting paid to, to spin, and no longer the backup for the guy, the MC. You know what I mean? That's the DJ. I don't, you know, are you club DJ or you a performing? I don't know. You know but anyway, uh, bounce music still had the DJ. Out of all those, all those. Well, Houston, Michael Wise. DJs. I can tell you something real. I remember when DJs was just DJs. DJs wasn't no hardcore dudes. <laughs> like, you know, like, I don't know. I don't know. The DJs become hard nowadays. I don't know. Some of them old school rap dudes. I remember DJ would not say nothing. Yeah, I mean, somebody get, get mad. But, you know, y'all know how it, y'all know how it was going down. You know, I don't. Shit. Yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> I mean, like, I'm sorry. I got, I got real right there, now, man. I'm real, man. Yeah, yeah. The a and R's, you know, y'all boys ain't never used to, man. Be hard. And, I don't know where y'all come from with that, man. But uh, that's why I don't, I don't deal with too many entourages, clicks and crew. I stay home and, and write songs with my, you know, my fellow comrades and, and do business. You know, the right way. But all all these deals I didn't had, I've learned and become some somewhat of a. I'm stingy on the business end. I'm I know what's going on. And uh, I just want a fair shake. Everybody want a fair shake. Bring new artists out and uh, get them the exposure they they should and do deserve. <laughs> well, we kind of, as uh, far as rap music, we dominated the rap music. I'm talking about like, you know, I'm talking about like, you know, as far as, like, you know how they say, the, now LeBron got a ring, he, you know, he King James, uh, but, you know, uh, I have uh, a few, few of them, you know, Master P, baby, you know, Juve, Turk, DJ, you know, these people done done some things now, these people, you know, so... Magnolia. <laughs> I don't know. Something in the water, I guess. I don't know. Magnolia sound. Me. I don't know. Wacko. You're making new music. You're playing a lot of it inside. Um, how do you think, has your songwriting process changed over the years? Or do you think, or your sound, has your sound changed over the years? Um, the things you write about. I mean, everybody changes, but do you think your sound, you're always recognizable, I've noticed. Your sound tends to change over time according to what you're doing mm -hmm. at the time. Well, so, uh, how do you think your sound has changed and what's it like now as compared to before? Well, I, I like to do different things. Like, so I might not. I like to do different things. So I like to keep it fresh. Listener ears fresh with new material, not because rap get saturated quick. Like, like trends get worn out quick. So I try to keep my own trend going. You may not hear an album from, I don't know why I do that. I don't know. it just be something, it take a little longer for me to put out an album. Cause I'm not really not, in, I'm independent, so I, I really don't have a rat race to, to be running with nobody to be putting out an album in certain, certain set of so many. I don't have, I don't have that pressure to, to deal with. But what I do have the pressure is, or the pressure of is my friends and fans telling me when the album coming out, like, you know, and that, 
you know, that really be prompting me to, to do fresh material too. So I want you to hear something. When you, when you hear my album, I want you to hear something you never heard before. Like, you never heard, oh, uh, you know, it's something new. Because my delivery, my flow, I've mastered and crafted. It's mine. You would never hear nobody sound like that, you know, and do it the way I do it. So the songs and the, the beats I pick got to gotta fit with my rhyme style or what I'm talking about. I may do a song with somebody else and be cool, but if I get it in my lab and I work on it, it's gonna be something else. You've got a delivery that's very. You've, you've got a delivery that's very, very percussive. I've noticed, um, and it sounds a lot like you're doing, um, you're creating beats with your voice. Mm, you know, that's that's like, part of it. Yeah. That, that's because your vocal is a part of the beat. That what makes it the whole song, really. You know. Certainly, certainly. So you just you come on and bland, talking about blah 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 blah. You know that really don't capture the listener, you know what I mean? Music is supposed to jump outside the box a lot. You know what I mean? Not not on occasion. Jump out of the lot and you find what that is, you know, that you're looking for, kinda stick with it, but jump out the box again into another, you know what I mean? So I try to mix it up. I do all kinda of, all kind of genres of music, you know. I try my hand in everything. Played instruments? I played the timpani. I played the timpanis and snare drum in the high school band, marching band. You know, we got marching band. So we have tenor drum. I played the tenor drum and timpanis in the concert band. Yeah. A lot of cats around the Magnolia don't know about no timpani. <laughs> I played the timpanis. <laughs> Well, it's a whole other era right now from, from when from when I started rapping and even before the storm, it's a whole other it's a whole other time now. Like, believe it or not, a lot of people back home, like, really, they back home. Like that's over. Like all that I don't even talk about that. That's over right now. We might, you know, so. Everybody back home, but this is a new younger thing that's going on right now with the I don't know, the sound, you know, the sound really, I don't, everybody sound the same. Can I, everybody sound the same? I really, to be honest, I really don't even listen to rap music. <laughs> I'm sorry. Like, I really don't. I like, because I, it's, it, everybody sound the same. And, you know, uh, there's no more creativity like it used to be. Like, you know, it's, I don't know. There's no more R&B. No, it's, uh, it's kind of, I don't um, I see strides in it. Don't get me wrong. Like I see, I see they got a few. They have a few cats that's that's nice, but I, I don't know. Substance is gone. Some of it. Everybody got kilos of cocaine, and nobody going to jail. And, uh, everybody got big old houses, but nobody tell you how they got the big old house. You know, it's just a lot of whole lot of bullshit going on. I can curse, no. Oh man, yeah, some dumb shit. You know, so I don't know. I, I come up with like we, we used to hide those type of things in songs. Like we used to say one line about it and that'd be it. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Now it's like everybody kingpin. Like, everybody talk about the same thing. Like everybody. The, the medicine net, um, when they were making uh, the beats for that record, do you remember how much uh, live instrumentation, how many live instruments they used? Oh, because it really sounds like... <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. Every, every... Oh, man. Flutes. I don't know. Every, 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 <laughs> bassoons. Every, 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 all kind of instruments. Over there, man. Just, you can hear a real triangle. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, that was a beautiful song, too. Uh, what that was? Not circumcised. Okay. Yeah, that was a beautiful song. 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 Yeah, that was a
perform. I'm over Dick Dill, so. Yeah. Beautiful. It was one of one of one of the medicine meant artists, I'll be honest. Yeah, yeah. It was nice. It was, yeah, it was a it was a hot. Look out. I ain't heard that song in years, like, <laughs> like years. It's Craig B right here, Medicine Man. See, I'm walking that one. See, not laughing. People are coming. Is there anything that you want to talk about that we haven't talked about already? Uh, that I should ask you anything that you think that um, should be remembered or be in here, or that I should ask anybody else? Oh. Um, Well, I'm working on some new projects. Well, I've been holding projects back for years, just holding them. Nobody never heard none of them. So I'm, I have a massive, I'm about to open the floodgates and just let some of this good music out on y'all. Thank you. Mm-hmm.